If you are working with ASP.NET Core Web API application, then there are some situations where you will have to make call to other endpoints. This call is quite easy if you are using the HTTP client, but there will be some complexity if you are using the clean architecture. In this video, we will understand how can we call our other endpoints. It could be external endpoints or it could be your own endpoints from your own ASP.NET Core application and we will be using the typed HTTP client for that. Let's understand how this will work. To work on this concept, I will be using the same application that we have created so far in this course. In this course, we are following the clean architecture and we are using the ASP.NET Core. You can get the entire source code from this repository. You will also get the link of this repository in the description box. Once you will open this repository, make sure to click on this star button as well. And here is the readme file which you can use to have a look on the list of all the videos related to this course. Now this is the source code and you can download the source code from this place. You can download it in the GIF format. You can also open it in your code spaces or you can also use the git concept to just clone this source code into your local system. Remember we are having this ASP.NET Core Web API application. And there are some scenarios where you will have to make some external HTTP call from your this application. How to do that? So to work on that concept, we will be using the HTTP client. If you will open my this another channel, which is at the rate nitis.cosic. And here I also post the latest videos. And here if you will scroll down a little bit, then you will notice that there is this video HTTP client in ASP.NET Core Web API. To learn the concept of this HTTP client in detail, you can have a look on this video. I will also add the link of this video in the description box. We will set up this HTTP client in our ASP.NET Core application and we will be calling these APIs. So this is just a public API that I found after searching in Google. So if I will refresh the changes over here, then you will notice we are getting the JSON format over here and there is this another API which returns a joke. So let's just refresh. Every time you will refresh, you will get a new data over here. So we will be integrating these two APIs in this application. The best place to register the HTTP client in this scenario is this infrastructure. So over here you will notice that in this dependency injection file, over here I will have to set up my HTTP client. And let's do that quickly. So here I'm writing this services dot add HTTP client. And here you will notice that we are not getting that HTTP client over here. So it means we'll have to add another NuGet package in this project. Let us right click on this project and manage NuGet packages. Here we will have to go to the browse option and there is this package microsoft.extensions.http. So this will add the support of the HTTP into your class library project. So let's just install this package that has been installed and let's go back to this dependency injection and this time if you will just uncomment this line and let's see what we got now. We are having the support of this add HTTP client and over here we can set up the HTTP client and there are so many ways to use this HTTP client in the ASP.NET Core application and based on the need you can use that. But here I will be using the typed client and to work with the type client I will be doing two things. One is I will be creating the HTTP client service. Another one I will be creating a repository that we will use into our CQRS pattern and we will return the data from our controller. So let's quickly create a new folder over here. And the name of the folder is going to be services. Inside the services, I will be creating one new class. And let's say it is coin desk HTTP client. Click on this add button. And what is this coin desk? So this coin desk is basically this API. And if you are using something else, for example, you are using your own API, then feel free to add the name accordingly. And over here, I have to use this HTTP client as a dependency. So that's the HTTP client. There we go. I'm using the primary constructor over here. So let's just use this public async task. And first, let's use the dynamic keyword to get the data. And here I'm using this get data. Okay. And let's simply use this return await HTTP client get from JSON dynamic like this and let's just right click over here quick actions and we are using this namespace and we are done over here so what is the url let's just copy this url over here and just paste it at this place like this all right now we can simply use this class name and go back to our this dependency injection class over here let's just use these angle brackets and over here we can simply use the type client like this 
and there is no need of adding this class in the dependency by using these services add scope or add singleton this http client will take care of all these things now we will have to create a repository so let's get a repository over here and here i'm creating a repository for the coin desk or we can put a meaningful name like the external vendor click on this add button and inside this repository i will be using this coin desk http client service as a dependency let's make it public and let's quickly add a new interface the interfaces are available inside this core here you have noticed we are having these interfaces let's add a new interface over here and let's give a meaningful name i external vendor repository click on this add button so this is our interface and let's use this interface in the class so this is the repository and over here let's just use this interface because we have created a separate repository over here so we have to register that relation in the dependency injection and again let's do that quickly over here by using this add scoped method and what is the name of our interface this is this i external vendor repository paste it over here and resolve it with this class now let's open this application project and over here we are having these queries so let's just right click over here and add new item so here i'm writing this name get coin desk data query click on this add button and let's quickly follow the same approach that we have done for other queries so here you will notice that we are using this dynamic keyword and it is not a recommended practice so let's quickly create a new class in this application and we will be using that proper class at this place so this is the response that we are getting from this api so let's just copy it and go back to our core project and now we will have to create a new dto over here what is dto dto is the data transfer object so what is the use of this dto over here the data that we are getting from this endpoint we will transfer that data by using the dto so we need to create a new class or maybe a record over here so what is the best place to create that so if you are using this layer as a domain layer then that dto is not your domain code right in that case you can create that class inside your infrastructure layer over here you can maybe create dtos or models folder and you can put your logic over there but if you are using it as a core it means all your core code is placed over there then it is okay to create a new folder over here inside this core project and you can put your model over there but make sure if you are using this layer as a domain then do not add your dtos in this layer in that case you will have to add your dtos in this infrastructure layer so now let's quickly add a new folder over here and here i will be using this models so let's add a new class add new item coin desk data and let's just save the changes edit paste special paste json as classes and remember we have copied the json from that response here you will notice that this is the class that we are getting but all the names over here are in form of camel case so we can use the github copilot and let's just give a command to replace all these names to the pascal form here i'm writing replace all the props name of this file to pascal case let's see what will happen and it is done let's just accept the changes and now we can use this coin desk class as the response model for that endpoint so let's go back to our services over here let's use this class and let's use this coin desk data as well over here we can remove all the unnecessary namespaces and let's go back to the repository so this is the repository that we are using and here we will use that we are updating this name okay now let's go back to our query and over here we will not be using this dynamic keyword we will be using this proper class name and there we go the error is gone now you can notice that all our basic setup is done so there is the controller employee controller and it is a better practice to create a new controller over here so let's just add a new controller add new controller and i will be using this api format in this case click on this add and let's write a name maybe external vendor controller let's get a new action method over here and let's just quickly copy the data from our another controller so let's just copy it go back over here paste the data like this and here let's use the get coin desk data and we are not expecting anything in the parameter so let's just remove all these things all right this is going to be the get call and we have to use this mediate our interface over here to send the request to our cqrs commands or the queries 
there we go query the name of the query is this get coin desk data query let's just copy it go back over here use that query at this place so let's just run this application and see what will happen so before that i will be putting a breakpoint over here let's just run it this application is running over here on this port and this is the swagger ui and that is the new controller that we have added external vendor that's the first api let's click on this try it out button click on this execute button so there we are if i put the breakpoint at this place let's see what we have we are hitting this breakpoint and if i go inside this data query let's put a breakpoint here as well now let's go to our services put a breakpoint here go there we are hitting this place as well and now let's go to the http client over here let's just continue we are hitting this place as well so let's just click on this continue button and let's let's see what we are getting and here you can notice that we are getting this entire data in form of json now there are few things that we can improve over here what will happen if you are having more than one api for the same vendor so in that case what you can do you can create one more method over here and you can write your logic at this place but notice that we are using this entire url at this place you can also customize it so let's say here i'm using this till v1 okay let's just cut it and let's just remove this breakpoint as well and go back to our dependency injection class over here if you are using more than one endpoint for the same vendor then it is a good practice to set your base address at a common place so we can do that over here so here let's use the option and in this option so by using this option dot base address we can simply set it what is the type of this base address it is uri and there we go now you don't have to make any other change over here this concept will simply work if you notice over here that we are writing this data as a hard code over here what if i want to get this data from my app setting file and if you remember the previous video of this course the third video where we have discussed about how to use the options pattern in the clean architecture so we are already having this example at this place so similar to this concept you can add one more parameter over here maybe provider and by using this provider dot get required services you can get this data from the app settings file and i would suggest to create it by yourself and if you want to raise a pull request on this repository then i will be happy to merge that let's quickly test this one as well the only change that we have made this time is that we are setting this base address in the dependency injection so let's click on this try it out execute click on this continue button continue continue and we are getting the data now let's assume that i also want to integrate this another vendor so what will happen in that case in that case the concept is again extremely simple you can get one more http client service at this place and you can also use one interface as well over here so let's just right click over here and choose this quick actions and click on this extract interface so i'm just extracting this interface and this time you can put this interface over here because this is not of any use to this core layer and we can register this http client by using this interface as well so here we are and let's use it like this now the benefit is that if in case you want to write the unit test cases for these services then you can mock your methods very easily by using this interface now to create the http client service for your second vendor what you can do you can again create a new class over here in these services so let's just right click and add a new item here i'm writing this joke http client and remember you can give the name to these files as per the need or as per the naming convention that you are using in your project so let's use this public class over here and we can get the code from this place let's just copy it go back over here and this time this is the endpoint that we will be using so let's use only this random joke and use it over here and we will have to get another model over here so let's just copy it go back to our models these are the models right click over here add new item i'm writing this joke model and let's just go to this edit paste special paste json as the class so that's our joke model you can also convert it to a record because we are using it only for the data model so you can put it like this you can write all these properties over here now i can use this joke model in this service so let's open this service over here and let's use it at this place in case you are getting the data in form of an enumerable or list 
then you can also use the same concept i enumerable over here you can pass that i enumerable list at this place and you will get the data over here now let's simply create a new interface as well over here so let's just right click quick actions and extract the interface there we go now let's go back to our dependency injection class and over here let's just copy this http client registration paste it again and what is the base address this time the base address is going to be this url so let's just copy it and paste it at this place now let's use this http client service in our external repository so there we go and here again we can inject that new client service what is the name it is joke http client service and this time because we are using this interface so it is good to use the interface and let's first replace the first one this one and use the second one this is the joke service there we go joke http client service and let's just copy it paste it again maybe we can write get joke so the type is going to be this joke model so let's just update it there we go so that's the interface and over here you can create one more query so let's just right click over here add a new item simply copy all these lines and paste it over there so this query setup is also done now let's go back to our controller class and the controller are defined over here so that's the external vendor controller let's just copy it and paste it again and here let's give a meaningful name maybe joke this time get joke and of course you can use the naming convention of the async pattern over here like get joke async like that and what is the name of our new query it is get joke query let's use that and without making any further change let's just run this application this time you can notice that we are having two endpoints let's try the second one click on this try it out execute and see what is the output we are getting this data at this place so if you will click on this execute button again you will get the different data because this is how this api is working every time you will refresh it you will get a new data at this place you can also test your first one click on this try it out execute we are having the breakpoint let's just disable them disable all the breakpoints click on this continue button and there we go we are getting the data at this place and this is how we can call our external http endpoint from our esp.net core application by using the typed http client concept i hope the concept of calling the http endpoint from your own esp.net core web api application is clear if you are having any questions or feedback about this course feel free to let me know everything in the comment section below and if you are loving this content then i would highly appreciate if you are liking this video and subscribing to the channel thank you for watching have a great day i will see you in the next video